Hi, it's Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's talk about some June favorites. I do have a few fails. There aren't that many, but I'm going to start with a really reduced skincare regimen that I've been using and I really have been liking it. After the shower, I get out and I put on this. This is the Glow Maker by Maylove. I've used this before. I've gone through about four bottles of it before and then I got out of the habit of using, I think it was like <laughs> uh, 2019, early 2020 when everything changed and I was like, eh, and I quit using a vitamin C and I could kick myself. Um, but I know that vitamin C is an amazing thing for the skin. And this is one of my favorite affordable vitamin Cs. It kind of goes on first thing out of the shower in the morning, absorbs into my skin. It has a little bit of hyaluronic acid, so there's a little touch of hydration, but it's not greasy. I love this so much. I apply it generously. Let me just show you a couple of drops here because it's very, you see how liquid it is? It's very water-like. Rubs in. Doesn't smell weird or funky. Um, I've tried the one, for the CE Ferulic from SkinCeuticals. That one kind of smells like, I don't know, like hot dogs. <laughs> this one doesn't, this one just, it's, it's great. I love it. It's uh, very affordable. I think it's under $40. Love, love, love. And then I've been topping it off with this. This is the Crave Beauty Beat the Sun SPF 40. This is their reformulation of their Beat Shield SPF 50 that they had several years ago. I really like this because it actually is hydrating enough now that temperatures are up and I'm perspiring a lot. Um, this has been really great. I'm fair, so it doesn't leave a white cast on me, but I know that Leah Yu, the founder of Crave Beauty, really is looking for elegant formulas at affordable prices. Um, and she also is looking for something without a white cast. So this has been really great. You're getting 1.7 fluid ounces here. This is 20 or $22. This I think is $38 and you're getting a fluid ounce here. Fantastic. Something else that I tried new this month that I haven't really, um, I use it once a week. I realized I've gotten out of the habit of exfoliating. Um, I was using just some exfoliating acid, but sometimes I like to actually use a physical exfoliant. And I know there are divided thoughts on this, but I want something that is going to give my skin a little bit of a polish without being too aggressive. So I'm not going for like the apricot scrub from St. Ives like I used to use back when I was a teenager and stupid, but this has been a really beautiful product. This is the Michael Crystalline Resurfacing Skin Polish from Make. Okay, I've used it about five times. I've had it for almost a month now and um, this is one of those products that it has a really nice hydrating aspect to it when you're putting it on, but you can really feel like it's, it's very gentle exfoliation. Um, and then it leaves my skin feeling so smooth. Like, like, wait, whose face is this? This is not my face. It feels like one of my kids' faces, so smooth. So it does have like little teeny tiny exfoliating particles. There you go, you can see them here. But the base of this is really hydrating. I'm gonna wipe this off because it's gonna bother me in the back of my hand. Um, so what I do is I make sure my face is completely clean, no makeup on it, no sunscreen, no nothing, and dry. Um, I'll give myself like, I'll wash my face and I'll give myself 10 minutes to make sure I don't have any dampness anywhere. And then I'll take a little bit of this and start exfoliating, you know, all around my face and I take it down my neck and I do my chest as well. And then I'll rinse it either with a wet washcloth or um, I'll like pop in the shower and just quickly hose off. My skin feels incredible. I have really liked this, but here's where I need to tell you with my combo skin and the warmer weather, sometimes I feel like I get a little bit more texture in the summer, like right around in here or between the eyebrows or like my pores are like kind of like opening up. Um, this is really helping to get the dead skin cells off. And I feel like reincorporating a vitamin C and an exfoliant like this once a week has made kind of a really good difference. All right, so from there, I've been wearing, I wouldn't say very little, minimal makeup. Like today, one eyeshadow, eyeliner, mascara. Um, I am not wearing foundation today, I'm wearing concealer and corrector and a little bit of powder. I've kind of just been like pulling out, like, okay, I'm gonna skip this portion, I'm not gonna wear bronzer, I'm just gonna wear blush. Like I've been like kind of eschewing like one category entirely all month long. But let me tell you my faves. Um, I am obsessed, 
with Glossier Stretch Concealer. This I realize is kind of like what I come back to every summer. And I have this on like corners of the nose, chin, under eyes, hyperpigmentation spots around the face, and it blends out really easily. I wear the shade G11. This is a, it's like my skin tone, maybe a little bit richer. This I struggle to wear sometimes in the wintertime when my skin's a hair paler, um, but this is not one of those under eye brightening concealers in this shade for me. A G12 would probably be, but G11 is really close to my natural skin tone and I feel like I can put it like in one area and not have it someplace else and you really can't tell where this ends and my natural skin begins. And I have been, of course, back in love with the Beauty Pie, like, okay, hit pan a while ago. I'm going to burn through this this summer because I'm using this to correct under eye circles and a few dark spots. And then I throw on this and that's usually all of the foundation foundation I've been wearing. If I do want something a little bit more, I have been loving the Bosma foundation stick. I wear shade 38 or I've been leasing, reaching for my Lisa Elders seamless skin. So if I, and both of these end up looking really like, like natural. So I'm not wearing high coverage. Um, it's a little bit more than a skin tint, but not much more. Like if I wasn't wearing as much like lip and cheek and eye, you might not even know I was wearing foundation. And, and these guys with the Glossier Stretch Concealer, if I use this on its own or I use one of these on its own, that's kind of the skin vibe I've been going for. Kind of fresh faced and hardly anything, just a little bit of perfecting. This is an oldie, but a goldie. I love the ambient lighting powders from Hourglass, and I've been using this one so much this month. Look, I hit the terracotta tile. Um, and I know that once I hit the tile, like, it's gonna go fast. And it's just because this sets without creasing. It works great under the eye. I don't have any product settling in that under eye area. Um, it, it, it has radiance, but it's not sparkly. It's so good. I use the shade Diffuse Light. I've been using Diffuse Light for 15, 16 years now. Um, and I've always wondered because when I was first trying this, this was the lightest shade they had. And it works well for me. Um, but I've always wondered since they've continued to expand their shade range, should I get a lighter shade? I don't know. I don't want to end up looking like Elizabeth the First or like Casper the Ghost, but this has been a trusted, like, I don't know how many of these compacts I've gone through, and I love using Diffuse Light in their six pan palettes that come out at the holidays. Like, it's my favorite, favorite shade. So maybe if it's not broke, don't fix it. But the other part of me is like, hmm, but have been loving this, and it's been perfect for a little glow, but still setting and not too much. Cheeks have been really easy. Either I do blush and highlight and nothing else, or I just bronze. <laughs> and it depends on the day and the whim. Today I'm doing blush and highlight. And I have this beauty here. You know, the first time I tried Merit's blush balm, I didn't like it. I didn't like it because in a packaging like this, it reminds me of those EOS lip balms. I'm used to just like, and every time I did that, because this is such a emollient product, it's so glassy and glowy, it picks up foundation I have underneath. So you can see mine's kind of um, got stuff on it. I end up just rubbing my fingers over it. And if I already have highlight on my fingers, I'll get some of that on here. And I'm kind of concocting my own thing. But I love this. This is a shade I didn't have. I picked up, um, I don't know, a couple weeks back. This is the shade Fox. This is a too big of a swatch here for it, but it's really pretty. It's warm, but not peach. It's what I'm wearing today. Um, I feel like maybe I have a little too much blush on, but I really love this. And, and of course, I don't have this portion of my face set. I have my T-zone set and my under eye, but this is really great and looks really pretty all day long. And it never ends up um, getting too greasy. Cause like if I'm producing oils on my combo skin, it's like right here sometimes here and here, but like right here. So this sort of kind of hydrating cream for the cheek is fantastic for me in summer. It keeps me looking kind of a little bit more natural and I've been liking it. And this shade in Fox from Merit has been fantastic. It kind of makes me want to pull out the original shade I got in Cheeky again, which is kind of more of a mauve tone, but I definitely have changed my mind on this because I'm changing the way I apply it. I just take a brush like this and I'll do this or I'll just use my fingers and not draw it on because when I draw it on and it's probably I'm pressing too hard, but there you go. All right, 
If I'm using a highlight, liquid highlight, oh, I've been burning through this. This is the Lisa Eldred Seamless Skin. This is Pink Moon. Oh, she's so pretty. I am wearing a little bit of this here, but this is the loveliest, loveliest highlight. And I feel like it's such a great name because like Elevated Glow, it's not glittery. It's not even like, like even particles of mica. Do you just see like where there's nothing to boop? It has a gorgeous kind of sheen to it. It has almost like a, a healthy skin quality to it, but if you really layer it up, it can look almost glass-like on the skin. So I've been pairing these two up and I've been getting really, really gorgeous cheeks. Now on the days that I do set my whole face and I take this powder everywhere, I've been reaching for a powder bronzer and I love the Gucci Soleil bronzer. I have the lightest shade and this one works because it's a slightly rosy leaning bronzer. It's not too heavy. It kind of works as a blush and bronzer in one for me or the one from Pat McGrath. I have Nude Honey and um, this is a really lovely shade. It's just a hair deeper than the Gucci one if we look at them side by side. You know, this one's a little bit pinkier. This one here is a little bit more bronzy, but they both have like the most seamless easy to blend finish. These are easy for me to use. I take a large fluffy brush. This is the Units 301. This is a synthetic brush, but it's kind of made like a food a brush. It's, it's really nice. Um, and um, I just use this all over the face. Another one that I really like for this, I haven't been reaching for it as much, is my Ruffer number 22. They're both very similar in shape. Um, this one's natural hair. This one is synthetic, but they both work really well. And I think it speaks a lot to the formulas here that it doesn't matter whether it's a synthetic brush or a natural hair brush, these blend with no effort and they never get too heavy and they never get to be too much. They're just enough. So if you're looking for fair skin options, I know this is, well, this one here in Nude Honey is not the lightest shade. Um, this is the second lightest shade and I think is a Pat McGrath website exclusive. Love this shade. I'm really glad I got this one. Um, I think they're both great options for summer. I've been really lazy for brows. I have been using one pencil and a clear gel. So I have been using the Blade Line by Make. I use the shade Cool Brown. It's kind of like a skinny, but not like a really thin, thin pencil. It has a little bit of heft to it. It's not too waxy. It draws a thin-ish line, but mostly I'm using it to kind of like fill in. I've got a little spot that's missing color here. Um, kind of just fill in a few spots and call it good. Um, this is my problem eyebrow. This one always gives me trouble. Um, but I feel like it's really good. It does have a spoolie on the other side. Um, the one thing that if you're curious, this is great. It's refillable. You can get the refill cartridge for this. I'm a little curious as to how well this is going to wash up because I haven't washed it since I got it. And I feel like I might be getting close to needing a refill for this. Make is having a sale right now. Their summer sale um, started yesterday and is going for the next couple of days to everything is 20% off. And I'm part, part of me is like, do I get, because I've been using this basically all month long, do I get a new one of these or do I get just a new one of these? Because part of me is like, what if the spoolie is just ugh, gross? Or if I can wash it, will it work? Because I wash my you know, spoolie like this when I wash my brushes all the time. I don't know. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Let me know. But I really have been liking this. Um, the shade has been a good match for me. The product is really good. I like that it's refillable. And I've just been topping it off with NYX Control Freak. This is $7 at the drugstore. Amazing. And it gives me a really nice hold. So I'm putting color in where I want it and getting it to hold with this. And it's just been really easy. I do love a lot of other brow products. Um, I don't know that these are like my holy grail, holy grail, but it's just basically what I've been using all month long. It stays on the countertop here and I just keep reaching for it. I've been really lazy when it comes to eyeshadow this month. I have been wearing like one shade or nothing, like nothing and a little bit of mascara. The mascara I have really been liking. I finally decided to try it. I did an entire video on tubing mascaras. I'll link it for you here as well as the description bar down below. But this is the Liquid Lash Extensions from Thrive Cosmetics. Oh my goodness, I'm wearing this today. It's like I can't stop reaching for it. I don't always love these silicone bristle wands, especially the ones that have like really short bristles. I feel like I have to get really close and then I <laughs> blink and I get stuff everywhere or I get it on my eyelid. I am the worst when it comes to mascara application, but this gives me really nice natural-ish looking, but length. I really like this. This builds pretty well on itself, but this is one of those tubing formulas that I feel like 
I want to keep going on one eye until I get to where I want it and then move to the other because sometimes when I come back like I'll do some here do some here and I'll come back and some days I get a little flaking and some days I don't so I don't know maybe it wasn't completely dry yet and maybe it's the days that it dries and I put a second coat on that it's like and we fall. I don't know. Um, but this has been really good. And my best results are just like continuing to apply, to apply, to apply, to apply, to where I get the length and the volume that I want, and then to move to the other eye or to the lower lash. And because it's a tubing mascara, it comes off of warm water and there's no smudging all day long. Really, really like this. It's a little bit more expensive for a tubing mascara. It's in the $20 range. I think it's like $26, but I get the hype. I see why people love this. I see why it's a holy grail. Um, I have occasionally been choosing to wear eyeliner. Today I'm wearing two different ones. I have the Aqua Resist from Makeup Forever above the lash line and kind of in between the gaps of my lashes at the base of my lashes on the underside. This is the shade Iron. It's such a pretty charcoal shade. Um, I have noticed that on days when um, I'm just at home doing regular home things. You know, I'm, I'm doing household chores. I'm driving my kids to their appointments or their jobs. Um, I'm going to the grocery store. Like if I'm just like living life looking like this, this stays perfectly all day where I put it. On the days we were vacationing earlier this month, we went to the Oregon coast. We went to the Redwoods in California. Um, we went to Shakespeare Festival in Ashland, Oregon. Like we, we took some time and we did some things and it was really fun. But at the beach, there's a lot of wind and it was a little bit warmer and this was melting. I had like a little puddle of gray here and I didn't know because I had my sunglasses on. So I feel like this is a good everyday mascara, but if you wear makeup to like go to the gym or to like, I'm the sort of person at the end of the day, I will have spent the whole day looking like this. I'm like, well, I'm gonna go water my plants. And when I'm out watering plants in my garden, oh, I'm gonna pull this. Oh, I'm gonna prune that. Oh, I'm gonna, and I start bending over and I start perspiring, especially now that it's warmer. And this doesn't always stand up through that. For me, for me. But I do think it's a really, and I like it, and I'm still reaching for it like all month long. Um, and I have been pairing it with this. This is the line works from Danessa Myricks. I really like this is a brush tip black liquid liner. It is really nice. Um, it's supposed to be waterproof. I would say it does really well above the lash line. Um, but sometimes my, um, if I do like a really like sharp wing with it and the wing is like coming up, it's fine. But if it's kind of like a straight out wing and my, um, my watery eye can start to puddle here. Sometimes it kind of eats it up. My eyes water and I know my tears are caustic and they eat through concealer, powder, foundation, eyeliner, mascara. Sometimes I'll have no eye makeup left here, mascara, liner, concealer, nothing. It's like I have a, a dime sized patch of nothing. Um, but this has been really, really good. I like it a lot. Another one that I, I like so much is from Make. Now I have one of their continuum eyeliners in um, kind of like an olivey green shade, but look at this. This is the shade Celestial. I like that it's kind of like a warm toned, but not too gold leaning shade. I use it in the inner corner right here. I use it in the lower water line. Um, I use it along the lower lash line, like underneath the lashes, just kind of rubbed up again there to bring a little bit of lightness and brightness. I love this formula. This is a really good liner. The one that I have in green, I love so, so much, but I don't use it because I don't wear something that needs a green eyeliner every day. This for me functions more like a nude eyeliner, like a waterline brightening liner. I know it's metallic and it's a choice, but I have been loving it for summer. And sometimes without wearing too much eye makeup, just a little bit of this, a little bit of shine, and a little bit of pop, and I can like tap it in with my finger or smudge it a little bit and it's perfect. The other thing you want to know is they have this really great little um, brush at the end and obviously I've been using mine you can use for smudging and then there is also a sharpener here so you can make this pencil as sharp as you want it if I'm buying anything from make I might be another one of not not this shade but another one of these eyeliners really really like so for eyeshadow if I'm wearing anything I have really been reaching for this um, I did a whole video about this again something I'll link in the description bar down below but this is the blessed Sydney Grayson glitzy fritzy collab I wasn't sure, but like you can see there's there's stuff like all over mine. Like there's little 
fall out sparkles everywhere. I have really been liking this. This is the only palette I took with me when we went on vacation earlier this month because it has like a ton of mattes right here. You also have this matte here. This matte is perfect for um, kind of blending up here if you have light to fair skin. This shade, and this by the way, is the light option. They also have a deep option of this palette where this shade will be darker, some of these shades will be darker, but I really, really love this. And I love these softer, more pastel leaning um, kind of shimmery shades. I am wearing this one right here called Be A Blessing. It's the only thing I have on my eye today. I've got this on, I've got the Makeup Forever and the Thrive Mascara. Like I've really been opting for really easy looks, but I've really been loving this top row here um, and both warm options and cool options. And I'll pull in one of these um, more metallic-y shades, you know, for a pop. But I'm so glad I picked this up. I know it's out of stock right now. Sydney Grace says they're working on having it restocked for their Christmas in July sale. That happens usually around the 25th of July. But watch their Instagram because they will tell you all about it. So if I'm not using this, the only other palette I've been reaching for this month is the Vega palette from Lisa Eldridge. I have been for the last like year obsessed with cool neutrals. And for the longest time, I didn't think I could wear grays. Um, and these are my favorite, like these guys here and then one of the shimmers over the top. Sometimes I'll wear just this kind of like in the crease and along the bottom lash line for a little definition, mascara, and that's it. Like I have been wearing the most nondescript, hardly anything eyeshadow, one, maybe two shades at a time. Been super lazy, but that's really kind of what I've been loving. I've been spending more time like with, you know, what am I doing on my cheeks or the lips, but still loving this. I don't know if it's in stock right now, but I love this. And I'm a person who never thought I could wear gray. These are perfection. All right, just to show you, um, I was able to wipe off the makeup forever and part of the one from Vanessa Myricks, but this make liner doesn't go anywhere. And all I have in my lap is like a dry microfiber towel. And like, I am rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. No, that make eyeliner isn't going anywhere. Okay, so let's talk about the fails. <laughs> um, I've talked about this already. Um, this is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Twist and Light. This is too much of a highlight for me. Like, it's a really interesting package with the product that gets delivered because it's all housed in these separate chambers in here. You twist the bottom, it releases powder to the bottom of the well. You can mix them up. The thing is, these guys, they're too shiny. And I, it's hard to see the shine sometimes, but they, I end up looking like Elizabeth the first and it's very, very reflective. So I talk about the mirror of truth, which is the mirror and the visor in the car and natural light. You flip that puppy down wearing this. <laughs> I don't know. Um, this, I might see if I can use like maybe as highlight on a day when I'm wearing a full powdered look, or if I want a little something on the Cupid's bow, or maybe even like the Barris Whisper, of something over the eyelid where I don't want it to be too much because I'm looking at it here and it is so reflective. This cannot go here. This cannot go in this area or anywhere over my pores. It's like putting a magnifying glass over it. Um, and I can't get it too high here because I do have a lot of you know crow's feet. I'm almost 50, <laughs> uh, 48 and a half. And, and this powder in me, this is made for I think a younger clientele or somebody who has been using different skincare, doesn't have the same textural issues that I have. I don't know that it's a bad powder. It's just not meant for me. Now, one thing I was super excited about was I got a new Kaja Bento, um, and this is a new shade that they came out. This is Forest Night. This is number 19. And I liked it because it had um, kind of like darker, moodier shades. We start off with kind of like this gold here on top, and then we go into this kind of more soft, shimmery metallic, and then the one at the bottom looked really nice. I didn't realize in the images that this also has sparkle in it. I'm not a fan of mattes that have sparkles in them, but I really like this color. I like that it leans a little bit cool. This shade right here is okay. And I usually wear these two together if I'm gonna wear them. But the problem I have been having has been this shade right here. This topper shade, although it's really pretty, it doesn't have the same kind of bouncy texture that I'm used to these guys having. But do you see how it, it chunks up? Like even just pressing my finger in there, I'm getting a ton of sparkle fallout. And this just leaves all sorts of bits underneath my eye. Now, if you wanna use this and not have those problems, do your eyes first, wipe away anything, and then put on the rest of your face. But 
I remember that coordinated. These are like really pretty colors, but there is a lot, a lot of sparkle fallout from this gold shade here, but these two are really pretty. I don't love it as much as I love the original one. I have an orange blossom and, and I've been, everybody talks about how good these are and they're good. I just, I was expecting more. I was expecting more and I was expecting this shade to look like this and fabulous and just kind of cling to my eye. I have better formulas in this shade if I want to wear a shade like that. Down to just lips. I've been wearing really easy, no fuss lip products. Um, I have been trying to eschew kind of lip liners, not because I don't love a lip liner, but because like it's what's the one thing I can drop out of my routine that would save me a little bit of time? Lip liner. But the one that I can't stop using is this. This is from Thrive Cosmetics. This is their Lip Fuller Lip Liner, but it's the shade Khaki. So this was created um, with Khaki from Khaki Reviews Beauty. And it's this beautiful kind of brown, but it's not too cool and it's not too pink. I'm wearing it today. I love this. I love this. And it's one of those that if you, you know, take it and then you kind of blend the edge, it, it kind of makes me look like my lips, but better. I love, and I think it for me, it's not so much the formula. The formula is not bad, but it's the shade, the shade that I love, 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 love. It's so good. I know they look really juvenile, but I really love these jelly charms from Kaja. I have two of them and I've been using both of them and they're, they've been so easy and so like pretty on the lips. My 15 year old comes and steals this one regularly. This one here is the shade Fig Soda. It's really lovely. It's more of a mauve -y sort of color. These all stain and they have a really nice kind of gloss to them. The one I'm wearing today is Glazed Mocha. It's a little bit more brown. So I've been pairing Glazed Mocha with a khaki liner. I've been wearing this one on its own. Um, these are fantastic. And you leave these on for any significant amount of time and you're gonna have a stain on your lips. And what I've been loving is to have my lips stained and then like reaching for a different gloss to put over the top because I can continue to build this color. The This one here in Glazed Mocha can get a little dark on me and unless I'm really wanting that really dark brown lip, I kind of just put on one layer once it kind of dries and the gloss is gone and the stain is there and I want my lips to be hydrated, I'll add a second layer of something else. And I have really been, um, I can see I'm almost halfway through this tube of the Beauty Pie um, Wonder Gloss Collagen Lip Oil. This is the shade Island Rose. This is one of their limited edition summer shades. It's the more rosy toned one. It has just a little bit of shimmer running throughout, but it's not too much. But it's a really, really pretty, pretty color. But yeah, you can see I've gone through half the tube. So I love this, but I really love the, the ease of the Kaja. And um, if I'm wearing the one in Fig Soda, I'll just reapply, reapply, reapply. And I don't feel like I need a mirror for any of these. All right, what I do need a mirror for, and I have been loving, are red lipsticks. So with my little bit of mascara, bold brows, a little bit of blush and highlight, I have been loving red lipstick. I got a new one from Merit. This is their signature lip in a shade that has been re-released for summer. This is the shade Aperitif. Oh, this is such a pretty formula. I fell in love with this lip formula when I tried it in the shade Baby like a, a year and like maybe four months ago, but I love this. This shade in Aperif Teeth is the sort of red that I like to wear, where it's lightweight, where it's not heavy, where it's not so pigmented that I have to be cautious if I'm drinking a beverage, if I'm eating a meal. Um, if I, oh, is it falling into my lip lines and going everywhere? Do I need to pair it with a lip liner? I have been wearing this Sans lip liner and has been amazing. Another one that I really have been liking a lot for summer on those days where I'm kind of going for a bare face with a bold lip is this one. One from Gucci. This is their satin lipstick and this is the shade Red Odaly. So this one I feel like is a little bit more of a neutrally red. This one definitely is a orangey red but it has just a hair more pigment in it and you can see that. You can see a little bit more of my natural skin through here but I have been loving both of these and to me they're different enough that they're not really interchangeable. To somebody who doesn't have as many red lipsticks you may not need both of these if you had one or the other, but I really love them. This is a $45 lipstick and this I think is 26, but if you can get aperitif and you love a red, it's so good. This makes four of these lipsticks from Merit that I have now. 
they're just fantastic. The other one that I love, I fell in love with, I got this when they were having a sale at YSL. This is the, the Bold Lipstick, and this is the shade 1968 Nude Statement. And so it's kind of like a pink leaning nude, but this formula is fantastic. I have three of these. I really, really like them, but I have been reaching for this one nonstop. This one came on vacation with me. The Gucci came on vacation with me. These guys came on vacation with me and the khaki lip liner. I, I usually take like way too much makeup and I really tried to pare it down this time and I had a really small makeup bag and I liked that. I spent a lot of time barefaced in just my SPF or with a really minimal face of makeup while I was vacationing with my family. But I really, really love these products um, and these sorts of easy, no fuss lips, kind of what I'm going for. I know that overall I look a little Tin Manish, and I'm okay with that. I kind of lean into the glow in the summertime. I like it quite a lot. Oh, by the way, this is a sort of stain that you'll get from those Kaja um, Jelly Charm stains. You can use them as blush. I've successfully done it a couple of times. I just prefer them on the lips just because they're easier uh, for me. I like them a lot. I'm trying to think of other things that I have really been enjoying this month. My parents and my brother and his wife and daughter came to visit the very beginning of June. My kids had just gotten out of school. We got a whole week with my parents and my brother and his family. That was really fun. The week that we took um, to go do a little bit of traveling and seeing a Shakespeare play and spending time at the beach and you know eating food at different places. I had a good time with my family. I've spent a little bit less time you know, discovering like stuff here in town or doing stuff here at home because we've been, you know, busy doing things with people and being gone. But I feel like July, we're kind of going to hunker down. My oldest is going to start um, driver's ed and uh, my youngest is volunteering at the library. So we're, we're getting into our summer groove where before we were traveling or had guests. So we kind of weren't really clicked into this is what we do every day in the summer, but we're getting there. I would love to know what sort of things have you been loving so far? Let me know in the comment section down below. Is there a TV show? Is there a movie? Um, I'm excited to go and see the new Indiana Jones. Love, I've always loved those movies. Um, and I can't wait. I know it comes out on Friday. And I'm already planning. That's my anniversary. My husband and I are celebrating our 21st anniversary. So we're going to go out to dinner and I'm going to make him take me to see a movie. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, but let me know what you're excited about for summer or what you have been loving this month. It doesn't have to be beauty related. Tell me your favorite coffee combination. Tell me your favorite snack. Tell me if you make like the best sandwich ever. What goes in it? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day and I will see you again soon.